Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity The sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ priest and victim that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Today is the solemnity of Corpus Christi, that is, the celebration of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Eucharist is a living memorial of Christ's redeeming sacrifice that has sealed the new and everlasting covenant. Christ is the living bread come down from heaven who gives life to men and women. On the cross, he gave his all for the life of the world. Our human mind cannot fathom the sublime mystery of Christ's sacramental presence. But we dare repeat with faith, we adore you devoutly, O God, head unseen, who truly lie hidden under the appearances of bread and wine. To preside over our Mass is Reverend Father Richie J. Gamaya, Director of Social Communication Apostolate. The Hymnos Christi Choir from St. Joseph the Worker Parish, Sa Sa Davao City, will initiate us into joyful singing. Come, let us sing and joyfully celebrate. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My dear friends, the Holy Eucharist is a celebration of the presence of Christ Himself. The bread of life came down from heaven to give us life, to be worthy, to enjoy and receive His Holy Presence in this Holy Eucharist, let us now ask for His forgiveness and pardon. Lord Jesus, You came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray to the Lord who gives himself in the Eucharist that this sacrament may bring us salvation and peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert, so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does man live, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Borders with the best. 
From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one. We, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. 
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. As has been mentioned in the introduction, we are celebrating today the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Or in Latin, this is known as the Corpus Christi. The feast which is established by the church in order to remind us of the importance of the body and blood of Christ or in other words, the Eucharist. We are invited today to adore, to worship once more this very important sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, which should have been given more importance during the Last Supper of the Lord on Thursday. But since in Holy Week, we focus more on the suffering of Jesus the death of Jesus, and eventually the resurrection of Jesus, so the Church gives us this day to honor more, to worship more, and to adore the importance of the blood and body of Christ, the Holy Eucharist. Maybe for first-timers who receive the body of Christ, we may ask, we remember when we were still in grade 3, Maybe we might ask, how can Jesus be present in that thin and peso-like size matter? Later on, we will offer something like that. Is that the body of Christ which we offer? Yes or no? Later on. The peso-like but thin thing. Is that the body of Christ which we offer? Yes or no? You are not answering. Children, yes or no? Yes. yes. Later on, we offer that peso like but thin thing. When we offer it, it is not yet the body of Christ, it is still bread because it only becomes the body of Christ and also the wine which we offer only becomes the blood of Christ when it is consecrated. When the priest says the prayer asking the Lord to send His Holy Spirit that this bread and wine may become the body and blood of Christ. And the church teaches us that we call that event as the transubstantiation because the bread of wine is turned into the body and blood of Christ. That is why when the, the body of Christ is already there, we cannot just easily throw it away. We cannot just easily put it in our pocket, but we have to eat it. We have to take it. We have to respect it because it is the body of Christ. Not even the small particle, we could not even allow any small particle to be stepped on or to be thrown because we always respect the body of Christ, it is sacred, it is holy. But for a first communicant, grade 3 pupil, he once asked, teacher, before taking the communion the following day, he asked his teacher, how can Christ be really present in that small thing? How can that bread become the body of Christ? And so the teacher told her, Do you believe that Christ is really there? Teacher, I cannot believe it. Tomorrow I will be taking First Communion. How can it be? Did you eat this morning? The teacher asked her. And so he said, Yes, teacher. What did you eat? And the student, the pupil said, I ate rice, I ate uh, dried fish. And even I also ate paxio. What happened to the paxio, to the rice that you ate? Teacher, 
it is transformed into an energy into my body. When I took it, I became energized. And so I had the energy to study, to run, to play. And so the student said, the teacher said, that also is what happens to the host when it is consecrated. It is turned into the body and blood of Christ, the wine, the blood of Christ. But the pupil cannot take it just for that. He further asked, Teacher, how many Jesus do we have? The teacher said, We only have one Lord Jesus Christ. But why is it, teacher, when the priest says, Body of Christ, is there a lot of body of Christ? Why is it that in many churches, the body of Christ is there? If you said there is only one Jesus Christ, why is it that there are a lot of Jesus Christ everywhere, anywhere? So the teacher, because usually teachers do uh, put makeup and blush on and whatever it is, lipstick. And so she was bringing a mirror with her. And the teacher took a mirror from her pocket and let it fall. What happened to the mirror? It was broken. And the teacher told the student, you look at your face on the broken mirror. The pupil was so surprised to see that in the broken mirror, there are a lot of faces of himself. And he saw a lot of himself in the broken mirror, the big one, the small ones. And the pupil said, teacher, I have a lot of faces in the mirror. And so the teacher said, that happens also with Jesus. Because Jesus is broken, Jesus can be seen anywhere. Because Jesus gave himself to us, that's why Jesus is anywhere. Although, like yourself, you're only one, but because Jesus is broken, he is found anywhere. But the student said, Teacher, one more last question in order for me to believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. The pupil asked, how can that small host contain the presence of Jesus when in fact Jesus is big, but the host, when consecrated, it becomes the body of Christ. How can Jesus be present in that small thing? The teacher said, can you see that building over there? The pupil said, yes, teacher. Is it big or small? Big, teacher. What about your eyes? Is it small or big? The pupil said, my eyes are small, but the building is big. But I can see it clearly. And so the teacher said, why can you see that big building? Why can that big building be contained in your small eyes? Why can you see that? Even if your eyes are small, the building is big, you can contain the small, that, that big building in your small eyes. The pupil stopped asking and said, Yes, teacher, tomorrow I will take my first communion and I believe that Jesus is present really in the Eucharist. So my dear friends, this great, this so great a mystery, the Holy Eucharist, the body of Christ, is really rich as a sacrament. That's why sometimes we cannot understand it. But my dear brothers and sisters, let us just have faith because first and foremost, what makes us see and believe that the Eucharist is really present, that the body and blood of Christ is really Jesus himself in the Eucharist, it, it, it always requires deep faith in us. If we look at that bread, it always remains bread when we use our physical eyes. But for us to believe that it is Jesus, we have to use our eyes of faith. Because without using our eyes of faith, that bread remains just like a bread. But when we use our eyes of faith, then it becomes the body of Christ. But my dear friends, let us also avoid two extremes in believing that Jesus is really present in there. The first extreme is what happened to the Jews when they quarreled. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? The flesh, the first extreme is that. 
we have to avoid that when we believe that Jesus is present there, the presence of Jesus is the glorified body of Christ. It is not the flesh that we have like in the present moment. It is not, it's not the flesh of Jesus 2,000 years ago because if that happens, then we become cannibals eating material flesh. But the flesh of Jesus, the body of Jesus present in the Eucharist is the glorified presence of Jesus. And secondly, the second extreme is also to avoid that it just looks like a bread, that it remains a bread, just Im we just imagine like it's the body of Christ. This is the second extreme. And so my dear friends, only faith can make us believe that Jesus is present in the Eucharist. But secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Eucharist, the body of Christ, also transforms each and every one of us. Unlike the food that we eat, the food that we eat is transformed into energy, into parts of our body, into our blood. But when we take the body of Christ, when we believe in the Holy Eucharist, it is we who are transformed. It is we who become parts and members of the body of Christ, the church. That's why the more we take the body of Christ, the more we celebrate the Eucharist, our attitudes will become also Eucharistic. We become Eucharistic people so that our actions, our thoughts, our words will be conformed into that attitude of Christ himself. That's why in one of my assignments before, I asked to those who kept on going to the Adoration Chapel in one of the parishes, and I asked jokingly, even if I know what they are, why they are going there, I asked her, Ma'am, why are you keeping on going back and forth every 12 o'clock daily in this Adoration Chapel? What are you doing? The lady just said, Father, even for 30 or 15 minutes after lunch, I always spend time here. Why? Because when I go back to the office, I am always reminded of the presence of Christ in me. Every time I take communion, Jesus is in me. Every time I visit in front of the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus is there. Instead of barking at my office mates, instead of shouting at them, I feel deep within me, Jesus is telling me, be gentle with them in your office. Be patient with them because I am in you. I am also in others. My dear friends, truly, when we take the Holy Eucharist, when we believe the presence of Jesus, the body of Jesus we take in the Holy Communion, it is we who are transformed and we become Eucharistic, being transformed into the characters of Christ himself, into the attitude of Christ himself. And so my dear friends, just a practical reminder for all of us. Every time we take Holy Communion, it is better for us to return immediately to our seats rather than make the sign of the cross or genuflect because Christ is already present in us. His body is already with us. That's why it's better to talk to Him. It's better to pray before Him and communicate with Him. So my dear friends in this Holy Eucharist, let us ask the Lord that we become united as one body of Christ when we partake of His body and blood in the Eucharist that we may become one, being members in His body. Because the moment we accept Him, we believe in Him, in His presence in the Holy Eucharist, we become part of His body and we are transformed into His own likeness. Let us, as church, celebrate the Eucharist and let the Eucharist form us into one church. Let us all stand and together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father, that through His Son Jesus, the bread of life, He may continue to feed His people and strengthen them in holiness. Full of confidence, we pray, nourish your people, Lord. Nourish your people, Lord. That the Church, the people of God, may remain faithful to the Paschal Mystery of Christ, so that the Eucharist may ever become a communion with Christ, and with one another in unity and loving service, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That we may experience as a nation the transforming power of the Eucharist and allow the Eucharist to help us work together as a people so that we may all live in a culture of peace, unity, and renewal, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That we men and men may long for not only what satisfies bodily hunger and thirst, but also what gives eternal life the body of Christ, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That our Eucharistic meal may inspire in us love that seeks the happiness of others, communion that desires reconciliation, and joy that anticipates the happiness of heavenly banquet, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. That we may recognize the body of Christ both in the Eucharist and in God's people, so that we may offer to our brothers and sisters a life poured out in loving service, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. For the intentions of Mr. and Mrs. Nestor Galgo, Vincent, also for the birthday intentions of Maria Cecilia Balili, Jeffrey Gaetano, Abraham John Alontoga, Charita Ligaya Delphine, Marlene Enriquez, Maria Lutz de Maunahan, and Rose Heraldi, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. For the quick recovery of the sick, especially Minerva Ginoo, Kashana Balili, Panfila Ariba, and Colomba Sintino, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. For the blessings and good health, of Mr. and Mrs. Leo Aguilar, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. For the eternal repose of Pablo Calunzag, Sister Lorenzina Layo, Catalina Ridulia, and the holy souls in purgatory, we pray. Nourish your people, Lord. God, our Father, may our worship of the sacrament of the body and blood of your Son Help us to experience His salvation and win for us the happiness of your kingdom where you live forever and ever.
my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for the good of all His church. Lord, may the bread and cup we offer bring your church the unity and peace they signify. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, O powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the true and eternal priest who established this unending sacrifice. He offered himself as a victim for our deliverance and taught us to make this offering in his memory. As we eat his body, which he gave for us, we grow in strength. As we drink his blood, which he poured out for us, we are washed clean. Now, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. So, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from me. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so the sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, His glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and ready to greet Him when He comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by His body and blood may be filled with His Holy Spirit and become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice which has made our peace with you advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Pope Benedict, our Bishop Fernando, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Father, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In mercy and love, unite all your children, whatever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh, glory and honor is yours, O oh, mighty Father, forever and ever. now ask our Father to forgive us our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us.
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace be with you. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited in His holy banquet. Lord, you are not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be
Prayers of the Sick Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in His sufferings for the salvation of the world, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us your body and blood in the Eucharist as a sign that even now we share your life. May we come to possess it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, also with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. a gift and a journey. Towards what goal are you journeying? This gift of life, where do you want to spend it? With whom? For what? Whoever you are, wherever you are, God is inviting you to be His special messenger, to bring His word, His love, His joy, His peace to all peoples through the communications media.